Blazor has some new templates in .NET 7. Let's explore them in this 10 minute training video. Now for most of my training, I work to give an in-depth perspective on a technology, but sometimes you just need to get the quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created the 10 minute training series. So let's dive right into Visual Studio. And this is the preview version of Visual Studio because .NET 7 is not quite out as of a time of recording. Once it's out, which is early November, then this will be in the production version. Let's go create a new project. I've already selected C Sharp and Blazor for my filter. And we have here the Blazor WebAssembly empty, Blazor Server App, Blazor WebAssembly, and then Blazor Server App empty. So these empty ones are the new ones. So let's look at it before and after for both of these. So you can see, so we're going to create, first let's create the Blazor server, the regular, the old school .NET 6 version. So we'll say um, Blazor server full, let's call it. And we'll call this um, Blazor apps. And we'll hit next. It will still do .NET 7, but this will be the, the full template as opposed to the empty template. And we'll hit create. All right, and right away, we're gonna create another one. So we'll add a new project and we'll say Blazor server empty. So we'll call this uh, Blazor server empty. And we'll, do the same basic configuration. All right, so let's compare these side by side so we can see the differences. They look pretty similar. So we have our program.cs, we have in our empty, we have this main layout.razor, which we don't have down here in the, the full, but under pages is the biggest difference. So under pages we have uh, four pages plus the host. Under the template, we have just index, that's it. So that's the big difference, but there's also, notice in the full is this data folder. There's no data folder up here. That's because the weather forecast, all that stuff is gone. So when it comes to our program.cs, you also won't see any type of services around that weather forecast. So if we go down here to the full, we'll see that we have a weather forecast service here. So there's some stuff like the all the all the stuff in there that was to kind of show you how Blazor worked and kind of gave you a, um, a starting point to look at. All that's gone with the empty template. So let's uh, say set a startup project and let's run this empty project. So we'll run right here. Notice the uh, slight difference here in the naming. It used to just say the project name. So it used to say uh, Blazor Server Empty, and that was a Kestrel version. Now we have three different options. We have HTTPS, HTTP, and IAS Express. So a uh, little bit different there. We'll talk about that in another video probably, but um, we're gonna default to the HTTPS version, which is still Kestrel. So we'll run this. And once this loads up, we're going to see a very different look for our Blazor application. This is it. That, that's the entire application. There's, there's nothing here. There's no slash counter, nothing at that address. Uh, there's nothing here except for hello world. You might say, well, Tim, it's a blank template. Why is there even hello world? Well, you kind of want to have something in there. Make sure you know the page is loading. And it's not just blank. Uh, but that's it. That's all there is. And let's compare that real quick to um, if we set this a startup project and run this, we'll see that there's there's quite a bit more that, of course, we're used to with the Blazor template. You've got, first of all, the, the main page, hello world, but you also have this bar on the side. We have multiple pages. We have the weather forecast, the counter that works, all that good stuff, The even the icon up here. But all of that is stripped out when you have the Blazor server empty project. So it really cuts down on the stuff in here. It's it's really cut down to just the, the what you're gonna need to get started. This has been a request from a lot of people for a, a while now to have this, this starter template that's empty. 
And just to show you, um, it, it's very, very similar, but let's look at the uh, Blazor WebAssembly app that's empty. And we'll call this Blazor Wasm Empty. And yes, .NET 7, we're not gonna host it or have it uh, PWA. And we'll start as a, set a start project in case we wanna start it, but the, basically the same thing. We've got the index page, hello world, that's it. That's all there is to it. There's no additional uh, configuration or, or setup or anything else here that is um, not just an empty template. So when we run this, it's gonna look the exact same way. It's just going to have our hello world and that's it. Um, a little longer to start up, but, oh, there we go. It started on the other screen. So hello world, that's it. Um, so that's a kind of a big deal because if you're learning Blazor, then I would recommend the full template because it's really nice to have something to refer to. Hey, how do you do code? Oh, there's a little code section right there. Hey, how do you do a button? Oh, there's a little indication right there how to do that. Hey, how do you bring data in? Oh, well, there you go. And even you have the, um, the if it's null versus not, and you have bringing in the uh, forecast and doing an async call to get the data, you know, all this kind of good practice and show you how it's done type stuff. And even if in your first few Blazor apps, you might want to start with this template and either in the template you're working on or create a separate instance of Visual Studio and have that have the template in it and then start with a blank. But either way, it's kind of nice to have this, this guide. But once you've started to build Blazor server apps or Blazor WebAssembly apps, and you're confident in how you're doing things, you really want to start with a blank templates because that way you don't accidentally forget the weather forecast service or, or something else that's in there that you really don't want to be in there. So the blank templates are a nice new feature in .NET 7. Check them out. Um, I'd be curious. Let me know if you're going to use the blank templates or not, if you feel comfortable already or not. Uh, leave those comments down below. And um, I just want to kind of get a poll of the audience. What are your thoughts on the blank templates? All right. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.